welcome. At every stop, we're going to have somebody saying a little something that has to do with the stop that we're at. But um, I was kind of asked to do this because I'm a native San Franciscan, and my grandfather helped build this bridge here. Yeah. So um, the Golden Gate Bridge is internationally recognized symbol of San Francisco and a fitting place to begin this march. Um, I want to make a note too though, that though I'm an immigrant and many of us are, this was once an, and is still the Ohlone Nation and the Miwok were the, were, the, were the people that lived along the shores of this bay and we should also honor them. They're, they're the first ones and they're the original Americans of this nation. Um, and they lived very peacefully. It was a very peaceful tribe. The Miwok were incredibly peaceful. So this march stands for the end of nuclear war and all wars. And I think it's interesting to note also that just 60, 60 minutes away from here is one of the biggest nuclear weapons design factories in the entire world, where bombs are still being planned, they're still being made, and we've got to do something about that because it's robbery to the citizens of the world. So as we travel through the city today, visiting some of the important landmarks and memorials, um, we are going to be talking today all day about nonviolence. And I just want to thank every single person that has joined this group today in support of the World Marchers. I appreciate all of you for being here today. And many of you have been giving your support for the entire, entire year. So I want to thank you, and I think we better start the ride, right? Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Mahatma Gandhi, a pioneer of resistance to tyranny through mass civil disobedience, founded upon total nonviolence. He led India to independence and inspired movements for civil rights and freedom across the world. The World March was launched on Gandhi's birthday, October 2nd, in New Zealand, and has traveled thousands of miles across six continents in 62 days to reach this point, we're very fortunate to have three of our world marchers with us. And the point of Gandhi's message here, if you sort of read it behind us, if you have chance, which is written, says, nonviolence is the greatest force at the disposal of mankind. It is the supreme law. By it alone can mankind be saved. He goes on to say on this statue, my life is my message and I believe that for all of us assembled here today our lives and participation in this historic march are very much our message a message that is growing and multiplying throughout the world we see the Mahatma portrayed here on his famous salt mark walking firmly on towards a non-violent vision of the future just like our World Marchers, and we wanted, we're really privileged to have amongst the World Marchers by Ravi, our great friend from India, who is going to say a few words. I feel very glad and I feel very proud that uh, one of the greatest men uh, from uh, my country uh, stands here today in San Francisco in the United States. And uh, uh, I'd just like to say one thing uh, is that uh, uh, the World March for Peace and Nonviolence. Uh, it, it doesn't just stand for peace. Uh, I mean, peace is a word that has been, you know, it has a different meanings everywhere. Uh, and there are a lot of ways to have peace. Like, for example, the, the President of the United States wants to send 30,000 troops to Afghanistan for peace. Mm. Uh, what we are trying to say is that the way to peace is through nonviolence. So peace comes with nonviolence as the path. and. Uh, we are asking for governments from various countries to reduce their budgets on armaments, reduce conventional weapons and redirect those funds to ensure that the human being on every single country in the planet today deserves the dignity and deserves the quality of life that they need. Thank you.
human rights and prominent leader of the African American civil rights movement. This memorial to Dr. King is the second largest Martin Luther King Memorial in the United States. Designed as a sacred space, it is meant to be experienced as a cultural pilgrimage and a journey of transformation. In 1963, in Washington, D.C., Dr. King spoke these sacred words. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Before making our pilgrimage behind this waterfall, we will hear the words of Dr. King's dream, a dream that has in so many ways inspired our own dream of a world without wars and a world without violence. I have a dream. One day, this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its dream. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created. When we allow freedom to reign, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all the soft children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free, free at last, last. God, God Almighty, free at last. Free at last. They're traveling 99,000 miles and in meeting in 100 cities to ask for the elimination of nuclear weapons and the end of war as a way of resolving conflict. So we have Sandro here from Italy, and then Luis from Spain, and uh, Veravi from India. To maybe say a few words to you too also. Please. Yeah. Um, this is for you for endorsement of the Charter of Peace and Nonviolence, which was uh, presented to our delegation when uh, we attended the uh, 10th summit of the Peace Laureates in Berlin. And uh, I think on behalf of uh, all of us present here, the various organizations that have supported the World March here in San Francisco, um, I'd like to say a warm thank you to endorse the World March uh, and uh, uh, see what best can be done possible in the city uh, along with the people here, uh, you know, once you go through this charter. Thank you very much. Yeah. 